Hey folks, Dave here, and I like knives. This is the Benchmade Stimulus, and I think that it is just wonderfully lovely. This is an automatic, obviously a push-button automatic knife from the Butterfly Company themselves. It might be going out of out of order soon. Uh, one of the different versions of this has already been discontinued, I believe, for the 2020 year. So it was a little while ago. This version has not yet been discontinued. I hope that it won't for a while yet. And prepare for information on why. But before that, I know it looks small in my big, big manly hands, but how small actually is it? Here we have Benchmade Stimulus sitting beside the Ontario Rat number two and number one, which looks like a bit of an abomination at at the moment, but I promise at some point I will get around to filming an explanation of why. Stimulus with the with the Spyderco Endura and Delica, so you can see that it really is, uh, it's a little bit longer than the Delica, but it does fit squarely, uh, squarely smaller than the Endura. It does fit squarely in that smaller knife category, at least by my standards. Again, another knife, another small knife that it's bigger than, not really proving my point, but this is the PM2 Tonto with the Para 3 Lightweight. Here we have the Griptilian Cousins, full-size grip, and the Mini, both all three of these being Benchmade. And perhaps most relevantly for the group, we have our automatics. We have the Benchmade 9400, the Benchmade Casba, and down here is the Protec Strider Operator Model. I'll be talking about this one a little bit later, but just so you get a size from kind of other Benchmade automatics. This is a knife that my understanding was redesigned many years ago. And so obviously fans of the original, this is a 3551. The 3550, my understanding was a little bit different. And as you can imagine, whenever you look up reviews of this thing online, you'll find a lot of fans of the previous model being a little pissy about specific changes that were made in this. I disagree with most of them. There's a lot of gold here. There's certainly a little bit of garbage and we'll get into that. Now. Our first gold is gonna be what this thing is made of. We have a blade of 154 CM, which is a right there, which is a perfectly, uh, perfectly usable more of a user steel. Uh, this was produced back in the day when the ma overwhelming majority of Benchmades were made in the 154 CM. Nowadays, most of them are made in S30V, but 154, I believe S30V to be a little bit of an upgrade, uh, stain resistance at least, but 154 CM, absolutely wonderful. It is a great steel, as well as aluminum handles. Now this is a little bit of the chalky Protec texture, but not as much as, well, we can go ahead and get into it, not as much as an actual Protec. Reason that I compared these is because while they feel like they have similar textures, back here on the pocket clip, I gave one of them a garbage for the pocket clip, I'm gonna give a gold to the other, is that this is so darn easy to slide in and out of the pocket. There's poss it's a possibility that there's some of that that is the fault of the pocket clip, but what I actually believe is making this easier to slip in and out of the pocket are these flutes. So you can see these flutes are present on the backside as well. Now, if this were horizontal texture, this would be a huge, huge problem, case in point. But because this is vertical texture, I mean, whenever you put your pocket in, it's really only contacting along these ridges. So it's in there perfectly stable. It's not coming in or sliding around on accident. Actually, these ridges would probably help to prevent sideways action. But pulling it out, putting it in, perfect. The pocket clip that comes on this, again, standard Benchmade three-hole tip up, tip down. It is only the one side, but that's it's beautiful. That's perfect. Lanyard hole a little bit high. Obviously, I would prefer that the lanyard hole come down and the pocket clip be pushed up. 
I don't know why it doesn't bother me as much on this thing as it does on some others that I complain about more regularly, but for whatever reason, it doesn't. I think this is really good. Contrasting with the Protex Strider pocket clip where it's just flat, chalky, tech, not really textured, but kind of chalky aluminum underneath, and it's very difficult to get this in and out of the pocket. I do believe those vertical flutes, you know, it's it's a very small knife, but it goes in your hand really well, I think a little bit better than that. The ergonomics of this, obviously, with the texture, subtle as it is, it's not going to move around. As narrow as this knife is, there is a possibility of, I don't, I don't know that on this thing, but on a more Puko, true Puko style knife, that it might rotate in the hand. With this, just texture, it's just going to hold in your hand just a little bit better. Very rounded contours, slabs on the, on the aluminum. Very comfortable in hand. Hey y'all. This action is great. Push button autos, the whole point of them is to open nice and snappy. And this thing opens nice and snappy. And the spring is not too tough to take down by yourself take down one-handed, which is the sign of a great automatic knife. To open with force and close with ease, that's what they all are about. Uh, T10, uh, Torx 10, Pivot, these are, all, these are both T6s, which is garbage, but I'm going to give Beth the gold. The size is beautiful. So we can see here with the blade that it is... Er, that it is solidly just under that three inch line. It is listed at 2.99 and that is a listing that I trust. If your legal limit is three inches, this should be fine. Automatic might get you in legal trouble, but eh. the choil is well done. It's not like back here on the heel, which is weird for me, but it's present, that's cool. The rest of the blade is wonderful. As I said, it is 154 cm. Uh, Mel Pardu designed, so the same guy that designed the Griptilians, and this spear point is just beautiful. The tip meets right there on the edge, right there on the tip. It's, I am not a, I am not usually into spear tips. I typically prefer more boring drop point knives, but when, the reason for that is so that the grind can go up higher. However, as gosh darn thin as this thing is. Look at this beside the Endura. This is invisible. This is like that Transformer in the second movie that when it turns sideways, it's invisible. It's listed at 0.09. And as I mentioned earlier, there are issues that fans of previous models don't like about this. And that really is one of them. Being listed as a black class knife, this has an incredibly thin blade. Now, for a for an everyday sense, if you're working in an office or something like that, this is going to be perfect cutting through rope, cutting an apple, etc. If you're planning on putting this in a, I don't know, in a charging bore or something like that, there may be a little bit of weakness in there. It's a very thin knife. That's not something that, that's not an argument that I value, so know that, I guess, because I don't care. I love, I love this thing being as thin as it is. This has a safety, which I believe all automatics should. We're going to come back to it. This had variety. We're going to come back to that too. The last point is going to be this button. Now, this button is another one of the changes that was made between the two models where this button got bigger. Also, I believe it was raised up a little bit. You can see it sits proud of the liners with the optional safety. It's sitting up proud is not something that I'm worried about, but it's got a massive hole that it sits in, giving you very easy access. Little knife from the future right here, but you can see that on this model, Boker Keyhone, you can see that on this model, there is no cutout for the push button. So even though it sits proud just a little bit, it's difficult to press the button because you have to push it so far into so far into a hole, you know, that big, whereas with this one, you're pushing it into a hole that big. Now, does that make it more likely to go off in your pocket? Possibly. That's why I believe in safeties. But 
I rare, rarely use it, so and it hasn't been a problem, so I'm fine with it. Overall, the brightest gold really does have to be this thing's automatic action in combination with its blade. It's the brightest gold is just the knife itself, the overall build, the perfect spring tension, the perfectly built button, the wonderfully made uh, made blade, very thin, very spear point. I just, I love this thing. It's blazing sharp. It's so narrow. It's easily pocketable. This is one of my absolute favorite small knives. And I do consider around that three inch mark, I do consider that fairly small. This is not something that would make my everyday rotation because typically I prefer something with a little bit more girth on it. However, this is wonderful. When I'm trying to carry something subtle as opposed to some other options, this is always right up there for me. There's a ton of gold here. It's a little bit of garbage too, and it really is worth talking about. My first two garbages I've already touched on a little bit. This used to have a black blade variant as well that has since been discontinued. This also has a very thin blade, which some people don't appreciate. More important to me is I really, really hate whenever a knife has an exposed tang like that. Now, it's not as prominent as something like the Endura, which I hate. I don't hate the Endura. I love the Endura. I hate the exposed tang because this cold steel proves that you don't have to. It's a choice, and Benchmade made the choice. A small and subtle choice. A small and subtle choice, but it's a choice that I don't appreciate. I already touched on the lanyard hole a little bit. I don't know why it doesn't bother me as much here. Hey, folks, editing Dave here. Just realized that I never actually explained why I hate this safety, though I'm sure I have in other uh, instances, but it does the little clicky thing to where there are, I believe, seven clicks from off to on, which is incorrect when you have knives like this that have an, you know, a single click on off safety, which is the correct and best way to do it, or uh, even a knife like this that, again, single click on off safety there on the side. So what this really should have been is more close to this. This is, I believe, the only Benchmade that I'm aware of that has this style of safety, and it is no good and also dumb. Dave out. But really the biggest garbage with this knife has got to be the fact that it is a Benchmade. That comes with a lot of good things. Build quality, yada, yada, yada. Value, not typically one of the butterfly strong points. This is like $180, but carries literally the exact same materials as this knife, which is half of the cost or nearly half the cost and bigger and so forth. And just as good build quality, the buttons, the actions, just as good. Doesn't have a safety, which I would appreciate, but that's, this is, it sits in a Benchmade position. It is, it's well made. It has decent materials, but it is priced. Its price is not adequate for the market that currently exists. There are so many other knives. Piranha makes things that look like this. Bear Ops. Uh, I've never handled either of their knives, but Bear Ops makes a lot of what I see to be highly reviewed knives that are automatics with decent uh, with decent build quality. Gerber makes stuff with similar materials, not as good build quality, but similar materials for less the price. And again, as I've said many times, and will there are a lot of people who will die saying that the greatest value automatic knife is going to be is going to be a Kershaw is going to be a Kershaw launch. No one has ever or unfortunately probably will ever buy a Benchmade for the value proposition. However, it is something worth keeping in mind. This is an $180 knife. I bought it used. I do not remember what I paid for it, but it was not $180. If if that's worth it to you, if this wonderful, beautiful little blade is worth $200 to you, pick it up if you can find anywhere where it's in stock. I would suggest picking it up fairly quickly because 
I, my belief is that it's going to be discontinued shortly or it already has been and I'm just not aware of it. If what you're looking for is an actual value, I mean, the Kershaw Launch 1 is not this thing's most direct competitor, but they do have smaller, uh, more letter opening style knives that would be a much better direct comparison to this. I would suggest looking that direction. So overall, this is a great, beautiful, wonderfully and well-made knife that I absolutely adore and am glad that I have. Mo I am glad that I did not pay full price for this, and I don't really think that anybody should. The 154th, the aluminum, the build quality, it's great. $180 seems a steep seems a steep ask in relation to our current knife market. There was a time where this thing was pushing boundaries, where this thing was one of the best automatics on the market. That's no longer the case. Something you should be aware of. And I think that, you know, as you are looking for ways to spend your money, that you should be looking at other ways to spend your money, ways to spend money while saving it. I don't know if this will be the best direction for you, which is kind of the thing that must be said on every Benchmade knife, but what else? If this has been helpful for you, let me know down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, let me know those down below as well. And out of that, y'all have a great day.